Vinny Melkis Outdoors, I got smoked. All right, I got smoked in my fantasy fishing league. I try to think outside the box. I try to do, I'm just a contrarian. I do try to do things different. <clears throat> so, you know, I didn't pick a lot of the guys that you should have picked. I looked at Bernie Schultz. I didn't pick him. And I picked other guys. And the guys that I thought, you know, coming <clears throat> that I fished with that I've seen do well in Florida didn't do well. I thought guys would set up a certain way and they'd be able to to really do something. And, and Clifford Perch, actually, that was one of my picks. He did all right the first day, but just didn't happen for me. So that whole fantasy fishing thing just got shot, you know, down pretty quickly. But anyway, so I'll probably do some more fantasy fishing stuff. It's kind of fun to get into that. But I wanted to do, I'm going to do an unboxing. I guess I just got some stuff because there's some interesting baits that I haven't even seen. <laughs> and you know, my quest for finding another great Tokyo rig bait. And, um, and then also just another bait that fits that profile of the Shenshoo. Sancho, I can never pronounce it. Because <clears throat> I like to fish lizards. I like to fish uh, water dogs. My grandpa used to fish water dogs in the Colorado River systems, uh, Lake Powell, and then around on the northern Colorado River before you get into the trout area uh, for bass and stuff. And the catfish. What, like a long, many moons ago, he used to be able to buy water dogs. Um, so anyway, I got me a tackle rump warehouse order. I just cracked it open. So, and I got something else interesting because I am what I don't know if you ever looked at my old videos on uh, tournament. My, my boat's always completely unorganized, starts off organized, gets completely unorganized. Some of my tackle management system stuff is just uh, not so hot, let's just put it that way. And um, I don't do very well with that. So, uh, oh, okay. So, uh, first things first. Well, let's pull this out. I got me. I wanted to try these new Ned, or not new, but I wanted to try a different Ned rig bait. And I thought, well, let's try these salamanders out from Savage. I don't. I've fished a lot of Savage stuff at all, and it seemed like something very interesting. I don't know if you guys haven't seen these. Uh, it said they looked very interesting to me because they reminded me of the old French fry. If you ever thrown like a in out west, a French fry lure used to be really hot with like a split shot. But check that dude out. pretty cool it feels weighted in the back i think this would be this is not only a good um ned rig big ned rig bait like they say it is but i would split shot that in clear water it, or if you go if you fish small streams where smallmouth are or whatnot i used to take four inch zoom uh lizards that's how i used to fish for them a lot it's just four inch zoom lizards in various colors <clears throat> and a little split shot and a little tiny, like, size one, size two hook, uh, offset hook. You do the same thing with those. Um, that looks pretty dynamite, actually. I'm, I'm a little more impressed with, you know, I've seen the profile. I'm a little more impressed with how the weight and the feel of that beat. That looks pretty, that's pretty awesome. Um, the other thing I did, so... If you look at my older stuff, my older videos, there's a certain type of jerk bait that I just absolutely love. They kind of, it's kind of gone by the wayside and they're kind of, seems like they're, you can get some from Japan. And, um, anyway, I found these on Tackle Warehouse and they only had one color and the size is a little small comparative to before, but it is my tried and true favorite jerk bait, the, or shad profile crankbait, whatever I call it, consider this a jerk bait, bevy shad. And I mean, this one's a little bit smaller than normal, but it fits that. I just love these smaller baits, but it fits that profile of like a yearling threadfin shed. So you see those in the fall, you know, that looks like a, actually not a bad color. I like it. Throw that on a small spinning rod. <coughs> Excuse me. The other thing I did. So this time of year, uh, we're getting in the spring. Um, shallow crankbaiting, uh, square bills, uh, you know, reds and oranges. And then I always throw a lot of shad colors. I've done really well. And I've, um, been looking at kind of expanding outside the, the mega bass. That's what I've been throwing a lot of mega bass sonic sides. Uh, the, what's that other one's really fat. I like the sonic side a lot, but I wanted to try a different company. So we went and we, uh, we got this, this little dude here. Well, I'll just put it over here. It's the jackal, the jackal bling. And if I can get it out, I can already tell you I like the hooks. <laughs> some of these baits, like some of the Mega Bass stuff, I end up having to change the hooks out. 
uh, for the price, but there you go. It's kind of reminds you, I mean, it feels plasticky. It's supposed to remind you of a balsa wood bait. I mean, it doesn't look like it, but it does, definitely doesn't feel like it. Uh, circuit board, um, lip. I like the profile, I like the size. The hooks are definitely good. I can see really crushing it on with the, one of these. I need to take it out though. Uh, I'm imagining it has that kind of real slim, um, you know, tight action, but we'll, we'll see. We'll see. I'm going to take that one out. Probably that looks like a grand lake killer to be totally honest. Uh, usually this time of year, you, you start slaying them there with these shallow, uh, square bills. And I've caught some pretty big bass doing that there. So I'll probably run down there and check that out. The other thing I got, which I was really interested in, which I'm kind of a big supporter of Picasso, you know, because of Aaron Martins. And um, I wanted to try the, one of their jigs. I'm not like, I didn't just, I got plenty of jigs. I just didn't, you know, I just saw this. And I was like, well, well, I'll try it. And that's this little finesse um, tungsten jig with their little titanium weed guards. And uh, this is the spot remover, I believe is the, uh, well, they call this a little spotty, but I believe this is the spot remover. And I just got in a quarter ounce. Actually, this quarter ounce feels a little bit heavier than a quarter ounce, but it definitely has a profile of one. Um, love the color. Love this part of some of these jigs. These these type of um, trailer guards or trailers, whatever keepers, are pretty awesome, especially if you work it around uh, the right way, so that it, you know, there's it, it's a little. You put a little glue or something on there too, and it really locks them in pretty well. As opposed to the um, like the old school lead deals on some of these ball heads, they suck. But these wire ones, or you know, whatever it is, you know, it's, I, I call it a wire keeper. They usually do pretty well. I've seen them on other uh, higher end swim jigs. And whatnot, and I have better luck with those. So I'm actually pretty impressed with this jig, and I look forward to. It. I know there's not even a question about what you, how effective that's going to be. Not even a question. I know that I'll kill him on that. <clears throat> kill something on it. I'm gonna something's gonna eat that. Okay. So last, certainly not least, at least what I've. The reason I even ordered this is because I was looking. Like I said, I was looking for that profile of bait. It's gonna have the movement that I want. It's gonna do the things that I wanted to do, especially with a Tokyo rig or flipping uh, in various scenarios. Uh, like I said, thinking outside the box, using a salamander tile, style profile and tail. And so we got these I, Fish Lab. I totally honest, I'm kind of oblivious to the company. Haven't dealt with them or fished any of their stuff before. Never seen anybody else with them. I'm sure there are a lot of guys if you're watching this that have. The only hesitation I had on this bait was this paddle tail. Like I love, um, I can't remember what Yamamoto used to call these tails, like a cut tail or something. But it it tends to flop and just do weird stuff and kind of drive this bait to twist and turn, um, or at least on, on their baits, which they are salt, you know, heavily salt impregnated. And this isn't, this is more of a harder plastic, which could have, you know, it's pros and cons. Uh, but it does have a pedal tail. So we'll try it out. If not, I, I have this feeling that I might take some of, some of these and just kind of take a exacto knife or whatever and cut these paddle tails so that this tail is just by itself. Uh, for flipping and whatnot, because I'd rather just just kind of flop back and forth and kind of do this little roll thing and look like a water dog. But this is pretty cool. It looks like they they punched a skirt through there where there would be, you know, the water dog gills. Profile's pretty awesome. I like uh, the head being that way. I think it catches water as it's coming down and it has it, you know, twist and turn. I mean, it looks like looks like a water dog. So I got this in a couple different colors. This is the four. The one right here is the four and a half inch, which I didn't know what to expect when it comes to the profile. So I I I didn't get the big dog. There's a there's a larger one that's like a seven inch one. So I got that four and a half and the six inch. I'll pull the six inch out because I actually think the six inch is going to be more my style for flipping. And the four inch is going to be more for like smallies. But look at this dude. All right, so this is a 
nice wide body, wide head. I mean, it is a salamander or a water dog, an axolotl, whatever you want to call it. That's what my daughter called it. She actually said axolotl. It's like water dog, right? But they have, um, there's its gills. Looks cool. Um, it has a little hook slot, but I'm going to try these. Like I said, I got these for mainly flipping. And when you get in the springtime, that, you know, it seems like these lizard baits work well. But it's not only that. Um, I've taken lizard-style baits, or I call them lizard-style baits. They're kind of water dog imitators, uh, salamander imitators. Fished them throughout the summer. Some of the best days I've ever had, used to, they used the old Berkeley um, lizard fishing that weightless. This is way before the Cinco. And fish that weightless over uh Various. Do you mind over there? Somebody's you know getting a drink of water and they're making all kinds of noise. But fishing um, these weightless lizards over weed beds and over uh, cottonwood um, layers, like so. There's these cottonwood plants, these trees. They drop cotton on, and it gets all over your line. It's nasty, but it'll drop. It creates a big mat, and then the weed growth underneath. And you just run that lizard over and drop it in holes. And man, it killed. It killed. Even even after the cinco started coming out, I still fish that, and it would out it would outfish it. Just the, that I don't know what it was. It was that old Berkeley. It was an old Berkeley. Um, lizard that they stopped making which i wish they would make if i ever got connections with some of these companies there's some great old plastics that um profiles that are just super awesome okay last um last thing i said last but not least on the bait all right i got one other thing because of my tackle organization skills are just not the greatest thing in the world so I went ahead and I took a chance and I went and I got the Spro Terminal Tackle XL box. Because so my Terminal Tackle is just, my, it's, that's the, I could say everything's kind of shitty or crappy about my organization skills when it comes to tackle, but my Terminal Tackle is really bad. All right. And this actually, I'll be totally honest, I have never seen this before. And I bought it. I haven't even seen these in stores. So I bought it, look at it. It's a little smaller than I thought it was. This is the XL. I'll be totally honest. It is smaller than I thought it was. Um, but oh, but outside, it looks pretty awesome. I, 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 I enjoy the color scheme. I enjoy the material. It's a very hard, uh, dense, I can't remember what they call this kind of plastic, but very high grade uh, in relative terms. Um, when we look inside, here we go. It has individual uh, containers. I'm going to try pushing this thing. Or I guess they're not individual. They're individual boxes, and it in, looks like one, two, four different uh, flaps there. Now, what I can see this, um, this isn't what I was necessarily thinking that it was. I, I, I'll be totally honest, for 20 something dollars. This isn't what I thought it was going to be. Terminal tackle, and I guess I should have maybe read into it a little bit more. Uh, but I could see this being, I guess, a weight in a weight box um, is what I'm probably going to use this as. And then maybe some drop shot hooks. Because you're definitely not throwing your flipping hooks in this thing. So if you go look for the Spro uh, terminal box, uh, you might want to look elsewhere or a bigger one. This is the XL version of this one. This is the... Yeah, just so you see it. It does say easy handling for small tackle, so I guess I should have read that. But it is a nice box. And I could see putting, like, a you can put your drop shot setups, um, split shot setup stuff, you know, you know various little t tiny, you know, swivels, um, maybe even s some replacement trouble hooks. I don't know, stuff, stuff like that. Uh, but I'll probably do weights. I'll probably because this looks like a good weight box, actually. To be totally honest, I'll use that probably more than more than likely for that. It was a shot in the dark. I just grabbed it, and um, oh, I guess you can pull this out. So yeah, you can put. I guess you can put some hooks in here. Weights, like I said, probably going to be more for me. Um, finesse technique specific, but overall quality is nice. I mean, I don't know about for the price, but everything's expensive now and you want to get good tackle organization. It seems like all those are expensive as well. So I might check out some of the other Spro, um, the other Spro stuff, or maybe that new company Busby. Anybody's got any, um, 
any of those, those would look pretty nice. Or there, I mean, everybody's come out with some good ones now that really help you out with, uh, you know, one, one is there's one thing to be organized, but also to keep your tackle, um, in working order. I don't know how many baits I've lost or had to change hooks, uh, because, you know, some moisture gets in there and you start getting rust and whatnot. And then also for plastics, but definitely terminal tack, or you get that weird lead coating from also other penetration of, of humidity and whatnot. It kind of root ruins uh, wet lead weights, uh, or I guess yeah, I'd say ruins them because you get uh, various you know deposits on it. It's kind of weird. But anyway, that's it. So that's unboxing. It, the weather's changing. Weather, everything's starting to look pretty good for pre spawn. It's not quite there. We always get kind of excited when you start getting those sunny days and you get getting those fifties and sixties out there and, uh, fish do move up and they do, uh, they do stage, they do sun, especially females getting those eggs ready. But, um, it's not quite there for, you know, bedding fish yet, at least most country, unless you're in Florida, uh, South Texas and stuff like that. It's, it's we're still wading around, but anyway, like subscribe, talk to you later. Peace.